Well, this video is going to be about the electrical system and the things I'm going to add to it and improve on it. And you'd think that some of the things I'm improving, what are, what are you doing that for? It shouldn't need that, but sadly it does. The main thing is the head unit. It looks like it's out of a year 2000 Corolla. The speakers are abysmal and there's no reversing camera. So I'm going to just replace all of that. Other things are things that I wouldn't expect to have to put in the car. I'm going to put in a console fridge in between the seats. Uh, there's going to be a, well, a reversing camera on the new head unit, which I'm going to put in. I can't use my rear view mirror because I, behind the, the headboard, there's going to be a pod that's permanently attached. So it's part of the tray and it's got my spare tire in it and I'll probably put firewood on the other side. But the rear view mirror will never be able to use that. So that's getting replaced with another little head unit effectively. It's only a very small one, but I can have a rear view camera, a permanent rear view camera feeding into that, as well as having a reversing camera that feeds into the head unit. So I guess when I'm in reverse, I'll have two cameras. I'll have a broad view from the rear view, electric rear view camera, and I'll have a focused view of the reversing camera on the main head unit. So the main head unit is going to be a 10.1 Atoto unit. It's not that expensive. I think it was less than a thousand dollars, but it's a pretty smart piece of kit. It's a full PC effect. Well, it's not a PC, it's an Android PC. And it's got all sorts of smart things. You can do your tire pressure monitoring on it. It's got an input for the onboard diagnostics, the OBD2. You plug in a dongle on it, you can read things like your oil temperature, uh, fuel rail pressure, EGTs, all that sort of stuff. And you can have quite a nice dashboard, like a, a virtual dashboard that you can customize with it, bits that interest you. And it's also pretty good at recording fuel figures. So you can get a history for your last month or whatever. Um, I love finding out how much fuel I'm going through and uh, keeping track of it. And it's, it's pretty good at doing that. You can do a daily, weekly, fortnightly, whatever averages. The other thing that's a lot better on this new 79 are the headlights. So I had one overnight and actually compared to my Troopy, which had just disgustingly bad headlights, these are pretty good. The um, LEDs, they're, they're automatic. So when a car comes towards you, they dip. And for a 70 series, they're actually pretty good headlights. I am going to put on some extra um, spotties because for high beam, you still need a bit more throw down the road. I'm going to do something a little bit different with the spotties. I'm going to have a big 28 inch across the front, you know, in traditional spotlight, just straight down the road. But on the angle part of the bull bar, I'm going to put two small spotties, 13 inch ones. And so that's going to give me some fill in uh, light on the sides as I drive along. Now I've not done that before, it might be a stupid idea, I don't know. I'll just pick up the camera and go across to the uh, bull bar because it's just sitting here. And if I spin the camera around, you can see that the center spotlight is a traditional, you know, pointing out the front one. But on the angled arms, I've got two small 13 inch spotlights. And they've got, to cut down the glare, I've got uh, diffusers there. So I've got a yellow, like two yellows and a clear. And on the center one, I've got a yellow diffuser, clear diffuser, and then I've got plain, like the you know, straight throughs. So that should give me some distance down the road, whereas the diffusers should um, put the light close by. And I've got uh, just, just the ARB fog lights. And also, just while I'm here, the fuel tank, which I'm gonna put in, that'll be one of the first things I do. 185 liters. Looks like a pretty straightforward install. Um, just hooking up lines and I've, there's a couple of ports across here. There's a, the uh, filler and the vent. And I don't think that's gonna be too hard. I think the main problem is gonna be to drop out all the fuel that comes, so I think when, when I buy it, they give me a fuel tank of fuel. Um, so I'll have to decant that so I can swap the tanks over. The standard fuel tank's 130 and this one's 180. I haven't seen anybody else do this. It might be a stupid idea and that's why no one else has done it but I'm going to give it a crack. The other thing that's different about these spotlights is they're dimmable. So there's eight different levels of brightness you can put in them, just with a rotary dial. So in the situation where you've got lots of road signs that are reflecting back on you, you can actually dial the power back on the spotties and just so you still get some high beam, but you don't get that bounce back in your eyes. The next major thing in, that I'm adding on is the lithium battery. And it's going to be a hundred amp hour hour thin, uh, format battery behind the passenger seat powered by a 25 amp DC DC charger and that's really one of the few things that's going to be connected back to the battery under the bonnet so that'll power from the alternator right through to the through the DC DC charger to the lithium 
and then I'm going to run lots of other things from that lithium battery. So the console fridge, my UHF, my tyre pressure inflation system, uh, the rear view, electric rear view mirror, all run from the lithium battery. I'll have two fuse blocks, one's going to be permanently switched on, so the only thing for that I think is going to be the console fridge because I want that running 24 hours a day. Everything else will be switched on the ignition, so as soon as I turn the ignition, the UHF and the tyre pressure monitoring, all that will come on with the ignition. I'm putting on a twin ARB compressor for my air CTIS system and it's going to have a small 4 litre tank. When I built the Troopy I had twin semi-industrial compressors, 200 psi, 100% duty cycle from Via Air. And they are lovely little, little things, um, but if one of those breaks when I'm out in the middle of nowhere it's going to be a lot easier to go to ARB and pick up a new compressor and keep and you know, refit it and keep going. To get better reception when we're just on the edge of reception, which is in a lot of Australia, I'm fitting a Cowfish 5G it's like a range extender. So it's got an antenna that sits on top of the roof or maybe on top of the pod, not quite sure where the antenna is going to go yet. That will pull in a signal much better than the antenna on your mobile can do. And so you take your mobile, pair it with the Cowfish 5G unit and you can have a, numerous devices. You can have your uh, tablet, your phone, um, whatever, connected to the Cowfish. It just, it's just like a router in your house and that yeah, just boosts your reception when you're on the edge of it. When you're out in the middle of nowhere, like through the Simpson, it won't work at all. That's when you need a starfish, not starfish, a um, starlink, sorry. But at the moment, I'm waiting for the Mini to be released in Australia. I think it's been released in the USA, and it's maybe just about to be released here. It's quite a good form factor, about as big as a laptop, uh, thinner than a full-size starlink. And it's slower, but I think we're, we're on a farm, and whatever the NBN gets us, I, can't, I think it's about 90 megabits. I think the, the uh, Starlink Mini is going to do 150 and the big one does something like 300. I'm not sure of the exact figures, but sort of in that range. So even the Mini is going to be faster than what I'm used to on the farm with the NBN. Um, so that's what we use when they eventually get released. And uh, if we're out in the middle of nowhere, we'll just put on, go onto the plan for one month while we're out remote. And then we'll, when we get back to civilization, we'll stop the plan again. I'm going to add a couple of extra power feeds uh, from the main battery or the uh, alternator battery and that's going to be one to power the canopy that's got a 30 amp uh, red arc uh, BMS system in it and that powers the all the systems in the canopy like there's 200 ampere hours of lithium there's a water pump lights all the normal stuff you'd have in a, in a canopy and then there's going to be another feed from the battery to the back of the car for a camper so if I'm towing a, a camper that's got a plug-in with like a 50 amp Anderson that'll go through to the camper and keep the camper charged up while we're driving along so I think that's the overview of the electrical mods that are going to happen to it. Um, I've made a little diagram uh, in a, a thing called Miro, M-I-R-O. It's quite good. It's, you, I started off with pen and paper and it just turned to spaghetti. But this program, you can you draw the boxes, you can have lines connecting them for all the different functions. When it gets tangled up, you just drag it around and the lines uh, untangle themselves. It's a pretty good little product and it's free. Um, so if you need to do some diagram work, I've got a shot of my overall electrical schema, which I've done, I'll probably put it in the background or do a screenshot of that somehow. So using Miro made it a lot easier to visualise where all the wires are going to run, what fuses I need to have on each run and like the thickness of the wire on each run. I think that's all I've got on the electrical system as an overview. Once we get into it and I'm installing things, I'll probably do a, uh, some blogging on how I did this and how I did that, but for the overview, that's probably enough. So um, I'll finish up here. Thanks.